What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today in this video guys, I'm pretty excited for this one. So a lot of people are asking me like, how do I get started in crypto? How do I do this? What should I do? Should I do farming? Should I do trading? Should I just buy and hold? Should I be a yield maxi? What should I do? Well, there's four types of people in crypto. You guys are going to want to watch this video so you guys can figure out what type of crypto person you are. Again, four types of people in crypto. Let's go with the first. So now I, I know I'm limiting it to four. Uh, I mean, these are just the ones that mainly stand out. It could be a mix of these, but in general, it will be one, two, four, as in like one of these four. So what is the first one? Well, the first one you have day traders. These are what we call whales. So these are guys who basically just like find a trend, buy, sell, do a quick flip. They can use different things. They can trade on moving averages, candlesticks, trend lines, basically just following different chart patterns. The biggest one that was pretty cool was sidestepping. A lot of people saw that with Olympus Dow. Basically, you just saw the trend line, you would buy after it dips, after it retests the trend line, you sell and repeat the process. So it was one of those ways where you can stack more ohm, stack more time. Um, the cat's kind of out of the bag on that one. But if you find trend lines um, being your thing, that, that could be you. I mean, you don't have to be a whale, but we kind of call these guys whales because you're kind of the minnow trading with the whale. The whale causes those price actions. So enough minnows get together, they actually make a whale. You want to look at the market as if it's actually one person trading. Because if you actually look at it, the market typically moves all in one. That's typically how a market rolls. So look at it as if you're trading against one person. And it'll kind of open your mind on the way you trade. So if a trader is what you are, figure out what pattern works for you and do it. Some people like candlesticks better. Some people like to trade on moving averages. Just figure out what you do best and do it well. Second is narrative traders. Now, there are a lot of people that really do really well on this. Um, and I'm going to give you a couple of examples and some narratives. Dog coins. Remember those? You know, Doge, Shiv, go nuts and ham like crazy. People turn a thousand dollars into a couple million dollars or even a billion. Nuts. Now, NFTs. That was another massive wave. I remember that wave. It was pretty intense. Same thing with Olympus Dow forks. We got Tomb forks coming up. We got Metaverse. We got Layer Ones. I mean, just think about it. If you would have literally rotated and played these narratives right, you could have literally turned. Say, say you hit the dog coin narrative right. You could have turned that $1,000 into several million dollars, even a billion. Let's just, let's just be on the safe side and say you turn that $1,000 into a million. Now that million dollars, you could have went and flipped some JPEGs and you could probably, well, have turned that million dollars into maybe, I don't know, 20 million, 30 million. Now you throw those into some of those metaverse plays. Now you you can, let's, let's just say you make a 3X on your 30 million, which is, very, very, very conservative uh, based on how these metaverse plays went. And some of them are still popping off. Could have turned that into about 90 to 100 million. And then you play the layer once. <laughs> if you made the rotation with Polygon to Avalanche to Phantom, back to Avalanche, back to Phantom, to Harmony One, it would have been nuts and ham. Of course, <laughs> no one ever wins all of these, but basically at that ratio, in about one year or a year and a half, you could have turned a measly $1,000 into several billion dollars. That's how trading with these narratives and trends can be very lucrative. It's not simple to do though. It's pretty hard. That's why charts look like this. There's only so many people that sell at the top. Now, the next one is yield maxis. So these are people who follow the yield. I like being somewhat of a yield maxi uh, because I can actually calculate the bets and plays on it. Of course, there is still risk involved, but I can make a calculated risk bet, I guess you can call it, or a calculated bet. Now, say for example, let me give you an example of this. Say for example, you have Polygon. Now, I don't know if Polygon's gonna pump, but I know a stable coin, or quote unquote, it should stay stable to $1. And I see it has a 30% yield. I know that I can get a 30% yield at that time inside that Matic token, or inside whatever that farming coin is. Now it's up to me, I can make different strategies, I can sell it right then and there, or I can speculate like, okay, this is early, this is a Ponzi, I know other people have to come in, so if I'm the first one here, it's more likely that more people are gonna come along. 
However, as more people come along, then I need to calculate, okay, when is this over? So you can factor in your cash out strategies. You, you basically crunch the numbers, figure out the math, and you're like, mm, okay. So we started with a million TVL. Now we're sitting at 5 billion TVL. And if we compare this to other chains, if we say, for example, Ethereum has 50 billion in TVL on DeFi, is it safe to say Matic can be a tenth of Ethereum? This, is, this isn't like set in stone numbers, guys. I'm just crunching the numbers, just like this is a math problem you solve in your head. Like, are we valuing this right? Is this right? If it doesn't seem right to you, or if it seems way overvalued, that's when it starts to seem like, oh, what the snap? Because you can't really reach to a point to where it's either fairly valued or a little bit overvalued. Because in order for something to keep going up, there has to be some bit of speculation. Why is that? Why do you buy something? Or better yet, why do you invest in something in cryptocurrency? Do you buy for it to go down? Do you buy for it to stay the same? No, you don't. Bitcoin, you buy because you think it goes up. Ethereum, you buy. You think number go up. Stable coins, you buy because you think you can yield farm with them and number go up. Or eventually you think that other coin that's going is scream is screaming to the moon comes back down so you can buy it so it be number go up. Everything, number go up. If you're ever questioning why someone does something or how they're acting, phrase it around the money. 99.9999999% of the time, it's all about the money. Let me give you an example. I have tenants all the time, all the time. They call me around the first through the fifth. Hey, my toilet's broken. Hey, my AC, wait, why is it broken now? I thought it was broken before. Oh, well, it's just broken. Can you send someone? Okay, fine. Rent doesn't show up. Why doesn't it show up? Because that was their excuse to try to get out of the rent, just like blaming it on you for them being late or not having the money. It's not my fault, bro. You sign the lease, pay the rent, and just move on. Whatever. That's the point. People make excuses and they make up different things and it's always about the money. Let me give you another example. Ask your friend to pay for your food. <laughs> or better yet, hey, hey bro, can you drive me from Georgia to California? I mean, maybe, maybe they may do it if they want to just kind of like chill, relax. But they realize if they're taking on that journey, they're going to have to spend a lot of money. Or if they aren't spending money, they're spending time, which they could use that time to make money. Remember guys, if you phrase it around the money, that's where you can figure out your answers. A lot of times people are like, wait, why didn't that person buy this house? Or why didn't that person rent this? Or why didn't that person do this? Phrase it around the money. That'll create a response you can kind of understand. But again, this is 99.99999% of the time. There are some people driven by different factors. Keep that in mind, guys. Now, the next one is FOMO buyers. <laughs> I do this all the time. These are like, they look for the next big thing trending on Twitter, or they look for the next big thing that's like going up 4,000% and they buy. It. I buy because Johnny says. These are the ones that really never learn how to fish, but they buy what other people shill and what a telegram group may say. I mean, this could end really bad if they pick the wrong one. And usually it does end bad. Uh, you really need to learn how to fish. Uh, if you aren't, um, I, I guess you could say you are the fish. People are coming coming after you. So now these are not the one all be all uh, categories, but these are some of the main ones that are out there. It can be specific to one of them, or it can be a mix of them. And overall, it will favor either one or all four of these categories. Now, I know you guys are asking me like, Drake, that's great and all, but why did you tell me this? Well, I really go to say all this because you don't have to do this or do that. Don't don't partake in paralysis of analysis. What does this mean? Well, you have too much information and you just get paralyzed and you just don't do anything. Do something, figure it out. I find so many times that people try to be traders, they end up buying high, selling low and saying, all right, well, I give up, I can't do it. No, keep trying, guys, it's the cost of tuition. I'm not saying trading is the thing to go. I don't do trading because first, um, anxious it makes you anxious just watching it some people are chill with that like i like to do something that is a calculated bet and something that i can just sit back relax and go to sleep at night if you can't sleep at night then it's something you really don't want to be doing now i find others that try farming and they be too greedy and they lose all their money you got to figure something out follow a strategy and try not to get wrecked you will get wrecked sometimes 
and take that on. Be happy. Be happy you got wrecked. Understand like, bro, I'm so happy I got wrecked with this little money because I know that little wreckage is going to make me so successful. I'll have a bunch more money in the future and I won't make that dumb mistake where I just lost a thousand dollars and in the future I can deal with millions of dollars and I won't make that mistake again. Just be happy you're making the mistakes now. You're doing it with doo-doo squirt money. Unless, well, you got a bunch of money, then it's like, well, just be happy you're making the mistake now because it's doo-doo squirt money compared to what you will have. Not financial advice, but find out what works for you and make it haps. I mean, not financial advice, but you will only get better with time. If you lose money, consider it the cost of tuition. If you go to college, you got to pay for it. If you go to crypto, well, you don't have to pay to get in, but you got to get wrecked. Let's go ahead and leave you guys with a wisdom one-liner. Proverbs chapter 21, verses 20. The wise store up choice food and olive oil, but fools gulp theirs down. What does this mean? Well, guys, save money. Be ready for a rainy day because it's coming. The sun, the sun may be shining now, but we need some rain soon. So if you guys want to jump in the Discord, there's a Patreon link in the description below. The Patreon is the Discord. There's the VIP membership that will allow you to get into the Discord, have Discord access, and that will have a lot of exclusive content I don't show on YouTube, as well as, well, some strategies and different things I'm doing in the market, as well as some other quote unquote DeFi degens and some, well, crypto enthusiasts. So thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you guys in the Discord. You guys can also catch me on tweeters. Uh, it's at rent a home fast, like literally at rent a home fast.